Greetings and welcome to the Golf Betting Show. It's Steve Babbitt here from Golf Betting System. I take it that you are well. We are covering on the PGA Tour the Arnold Palmer Invitational. Welcome. The Golf Betting Show is for viewers of 18 and above. Please be gamble aware. Now, before we get into the detail, as some of you are aware, the Steve Bamford Golf Channel, this is a new channel on YouTube. So, press the subscribe button. I've been very, very pleased. I think we're up to almost 200 subscribers and we've only done three shows. So, Please press the subscribe button, that way you then ensure that you will receive the Golf Betting Show every, well, at the precise moment that it is uploaded. On top of that, so subscribe. Let's get those subscriber numbers through the 200 barriers. So I'm very pleased with the numbers so far. We've only done three shows. I think it was 600 views last week, which is excellent. So keep it coming. Press the subscribe button. And of course, as I always say, and I've said for years, give us a like because the amount of likes and the amount of subscribers is what makes YouTube show the, uh, show the video more in the recommended video section and within Google search. So press the subscribe button and please give me a like. I'm available on Twitter at Bamford Golf. Paul Williams, our European tour expert, is available at Golf Betting. Let's drive Paul towards 10,000 followers. I'll also put a link in the description box to the Golf Betting System uh, podcast, which is out each and every week with my colleague, Paul Williams. Okay, if you want to view any of the pre uh, the, pre the Golf Betting previews, the one that I pulled together for the Arnold Palmer Invitational, just type Golf Betting System, Golf Betting Tips into Google or into Bing or a search engine of your choice you will find all of our content. It includes the predictor model. It includes all of our tournament statistics. Uh, it's just, if, you, if you're a golf betting person, Golf Betting System is the website for you. So Golf Betting System or Golf Betting Tips into Google and you will find us. Okay, the Arnold Palmer Invitational, I have to say it's loaded. It's a great tournament. Um, the Honda Classic last week has been badly, badly hit by the W, well, by the current schedule. So it was a weaker field for the Honda. Uh, congratulations to Sung Jae Im backers. Uh, we scored 80 to 1 each way on Lee Westwood. So thank you, Lee, for birding the last hole. I also think Gary Woodland, who was my other main tip, um, he was close, very, very close, but he had a very poor, unlucky, I think it was, Saturday. He said that he got three balls in basically sand divots and he three doubles not great now it looks like we're going to have another windswept tournament this week at the Arnold Palmer Invitational which takes place in Orlando but I'll go into a bit more detail around that in a short while what I'll do is take you through the top 10 in this week's predictor model as I said golf betting system golf betting tips into your you into your google search into your search engine of your choice, you will find the website. Just click on Predictor at the top, PGA Tour Predictor. You will have access. It's completely free of charge. You can use it as many times as you want. And it generates statistically um, just a great way of bringing a field of 144, I think, this week down into a more manageable chunk. Uh, some good stats in there this week as well. Wind positive players over the last five years. That is going to be really really important okay top 10 of this of my published predictor model which i pulled together yesterday monday i'm recording this tuesday morning now right now bookmaker of the week it has to be bet fred um, they are offering seven places each way at the peak on the um, arnold palmer invitational this week which is a fantastic effort they are also right now best price in the uk on tommy fleetwood at 14 to 1 Bryson DeChambeau at 18 to 1, Adam Scott 22 to 1, Finale Day and Fowler at 33 to 1, Justin Rose at 40 to 1, Henrik Stenson as well, Morikawa and Fitzpatrick at 50s. Fitzpatrick was a runner up here last year. Tyrrell Hatton at 55s and Kevin Kisner at 80 to 1. You will not get a better price in the United Kingdom. Or Northern Ireland right now, and I'm recording this early Tuesday morning in the UK, than Bet Fred. Um, golf betting system, again, come to the website. If you haven't got a Bet Fred account, and I've been mentioning Bet Fred now for nine on 12 months, you will receive for new customers signing up for our website a Bet 10 
and get £30 of free bets plus 30 free spins at the Betfred Casino via golf betting system. That is a better deal than if you go direct to Betfred. Key terms and conditions, of course, available on the GBS website. Top 10 on the model then. 10, if I mention each way places, all of 50 odds. 10 is Jason Day, 33 to 1 with Betfred, 7 places each way. 9 is Tyrrell Hatton, 55 to 1 with Betfred, 7 places each way. 8, Xander Chauflay, 22 to 1 with Unibet, 6 places each way. 7, Patrick Reed coming off a win in Mexico, 28 to 1 with Unibet, 6 places each way. 6, Tommy Fleetwood, 14 to 1 with Betfair Sportsbook, 8 places each way. 5, Hideki Matsuama, 20 to 1 with Betfair, 8 places each way. 4 is Justin Rose, 40 to 1 with Betfred, 7 places each way. 3, Adam Scott, 22 to 1 with Betfred, 7 places each way. 2, Ricky Fowler, 33 to 1 with Betfair, 8 places each way. Number 1, Rory McElroy, 11 to 2 with Betfair, 8 places each way. Rory McElroy is 11 to 2 in this market. The next best price is Tommy Fleetwood at 14 to 1. So there's a huge gap between McElroy and Fleetwood. And Brooks Kepka. Brooks Kepka this week. Brooks Kepka is 30 to 1 with Bet365 best price. And people are still thinking that he's going to win the Masters. It's uh, If he is going to win the Masters, he needs to show something very, very soon. Bay Hill could be his kind of golf course. Right. Bay Hill, par 72, 7,454 yards, pretty much at sea level. It features a set, tough, a set of tough par 4s plus 3 of the par 5s measure over 550 yards. The putting surfaces this week, again, like the Honda Classic at PGA National last week, are Tiff Eagle Bermuda Grass. Uh, 2019 saw a new tee box on the par 5 fourth hole, taking that particular par 5 from 560 to 590 yards. Naturally, it's an Arnold Palmer redesign from 2009. It's a tough golf course it's a classical golf course as well you think florida golf courses but actually when you when you um, look at bay hill a lot of the uh, holes here are tree lined there is water in play naturally because it is a florida golf course and it can play particular uh, it isn't pga national honda classic tough put it that way um depends on the firmness of the of the agronomy the grass and the greens it also depends of catch naturally on wind uh, 2017, it ranked 9th of 50 courses in terms of difficulty. 2018, 15th of 51. And last year, uh, with Frankie Molinari winning at 12 under, which for a PGA Tour event in the United States is a pretty high score. Um, when I say high, I mean tough, low score being something like 30 under. Um, it was a 72.38 Overall average, and it ranked in the top 10, again, for difficulty. Fairway widths, 33 yards at um, 300 yards off the tee. And that compares to 25 yards that we saw last week at PGA National and 26 yards at Riviera a few weeks ago. So the fairways are a lot wider. They're easier to find, the fairways. Um, if you're looking for Arnold Palmer designs that can link into this, look for TPC Boston, where they play the Dell Technologies Championship again this year. Also, Albany, where they've been playing the Hero World Challenge since 2015. Um, you can also look at some old um, career builder or Bob Hope classic leaderboards going back uh, to 2008 because the Palmer Private was the host course, so 36 holes were played for that Bob Hope Classic Career Builder Challenge up to 2015. So if you're looking for Palmer uh, players that are positive, that's a good uh, good courses to look at. A wider format. Um, it doesn't make the golf course relatively uh, particularly easy, though. Winning scores, Francesco Molinari won at 11 under. 
Uh, Rory McIlroy's 18 under in 2018, which in fact was firm and fast from memory. Leishman 11 under, Jason Day 17 under. As ever with golf, and especially Florida golf, um, the golf courses are very open to wind. That particular year, 2017, with Mark Leishman winning at 11 under, I think is going to be a lot more similar to what we see this particular week. I'll go into that in a little bit more detail. Now, if we're looking for winning prices here, Francesco Malari last year won at 33 to 1. 2018 was Rory McIlroy at 20 to 1. And that's kind of indicative of the form that McIlroy was in. Mark Leishman, 100 to 1. Bear with me. That is a 50 to 1 winning average over the last three years. Jason Day at 14 to 1, and then Matt Every, 300 to 1, 66 to 1. We then go into the Tiger Woods era when he was winning at short digits. We also had Martin Laird, believe it or not, 2011. He was in the world top 50 at that point, winning at 40. Five to one. So Molinari, McElroy, Leishman, Day, Every, Every, Woods, Woods, Laird, Els. Every and Woods, clearly American winners. But you look at the leaderboards here, you do get a lot of internationals that really come to the top of that leaderboard. Now, weather, I'll read this. I'm expecting firm and fast conditions again for the Arnold Palmer Invitational. Only six millimetres of rain fell in the area last week. And with fine conditions and no rain forecast this week, the course is due to get firmer and faster throughout. The only issue could be if the tournament organisers decide to give Bay Hill a good dousing before the tournament starts. And that, that could happen as plenty of wind is forecast throughout the tournament. Now, this is a new departure for the Arnold Palmer, which usually features less wind than the Honda Classic, but 2020 sees significant wind in play with Thursday, Saturday and Sunday seeing gusts in excess of 20 miles an hour. Also temperatures fall from 30 degrees Celsius on Thursday to around about 20 degrees across the weekend. So I am seeing 15 to 20 gusting 25 on some days across the whole four days this a week. On top of that, the wind is changing direction across all four days. So I think this is going to be a technical scoring golf tournament this week. I don't think we're going to see anything like 18 under where McElroy won two years ago. For me, and we were, I was discussing this with Paul Williams earlier this morning, I don't know what I don't really know what's in play. It could be anything from say, I don't know, eight, nine, ten. 11 under par, that kind of region, I think, wins this week. Um, I might be wrong. I'm sitting in the United Kingdom in my office. I often get things wrong, but my view is that it's going to play firm and fast. They're bound to make the greens a bit more receptive with the wind forecast. But I think the fairways um, are going to be pretty firm this week. I think it's going to be fiery, this golf course. If we look at previous winners and what they have averaged in terms of skill stats, I'll start with traditional skill stats, the accuracy, the greens and regulation, pain average, blah, blah, blah. Drive over the last 10 years, driving distance 23rd, driving accuracy 33rd, greens in reg 15th, proximity to hole 30th, scrambling 22nd, pain average 15th. This is what you tend to get with classical golf courses, really any style can win, simple as that. Scrambler can win one, way, one year, best ball striker wins the next. You know, Patrick Reed won the Masters around a classical old-style golf course a few years ago. Prior to that, you had Sergio Garcia, who just literally ball striked uh, his way to victory. That's what you get on these older courses. Skill, different skill sets can win. And that often brings up good prices in terms of winners. You don't have to pop out of a model to win something like the Bay Hill um, or the Arnold Palmer Invitational. For the last four years in terms of stroke gain data, if we look at the winners and average them out, strokes gained off the T19. Strokes gained on approach 21st, strokes gained around the green 33rd, and strokes gained T to green 10th. That is quite low. I think last week at the PGA, at PGA National, it was like strokes gained T to green was averaged out at third, a third. And this year, of course, Sung Jae Im topped strokes gained T to green. Um, 
and putting was like 23rd. This, year, this week at Bay Hill, it's completely the opposite. Strokes gained tee to green 10th. Strokes gained putting 3rd. Fact of the matter is, you have to be absolutely red hot with the putter to get the job done at Bay Hill. I mean, I'll look at Molinari's statistics from last year. He was 13th for strokes gained tee to green. He gained 1.6 strokes on the field uh, per round. And in putting... He also he gained 1.7 strokes per round, and he was fourth for strokes gained putting. Year before, Rory McIlroy, tee to green, uh, 1.9 strokes gained tee to green, two and a half strokes gained putting. Rory McIlroy ranked first, yeah, first for strokes gained putting. If Rory McIlroy ranks first for strokes gained putting, he wins the golf tournament. It's that obvious and it's that easy. So you've got to putt well this week. It's as simple as that. And of course, that makes it difficult because as we know, the putting variable, and if you keep a track on, pl on players' skill sets, and it's always the putting variable that is by far the most difficult to forecast because some weeks guys putt well and other weeks they putt, putt absolutely abysmally. Right, in terms of where we need players to be across the tournament, Molinari was 8th after round 1 last uh, last year, McElroy 13th, Mark Leishman 20th, and then Jason Day 1st, 7th for every and 17th, 5th, 4th, 4th. You've got to be in the top 20 after round 1. It's as simple as that. But And this is the bit I found fascinating. I'm going to take Tiger Woods out of this. But if we go back to Matt Every, okay, he was 8th at Copperhead when he won the first time here. He had four in of 8th, 24th, 6th. 8th and 24th were both in Florida. Now, of course, this is the second stop on the Florida swing. You're going to get a lot of players like Molinari last year who come, come here, and this is their first Florida tournament. But recently, Jason Day, 23rd, 11th missed cut. Mark Leishman, 27th missed cut, 24th. Rory McIlroy, 20 to 1, remember. Miss cut 59th, 20th. That was his form in. Everyone was saying that McIlroy was finished at that stage. And then Frankie Molinari last year, 17th of the World Golf Championship, 27th in a mat field of 35 at Kapalua. Red hot form like a Bryson DeChambeau, like a Hideki Matsuama. Top 10s in tournaments directly before here. Don't tend to actually... Give us the winner. That's the recent trend here. I can go back to Ernie Els, who was first at Doral, 67th at PJ National, 10th at Riviera. Uh, Martin Laird was fifth at Cobhead, 10th at Doral. Under lot, uh, form can, and it did back in 2010-2011, mean a lot. And Tiger Woods, yes. But recently, over the last five renewals, Red Hot Form has not won this tournament. And actually, when I looked at the people that placed, most of the people that placed as well, Seconds, thirds, fourths, and fifths didn't have great form on the way in. So just bear that in mind. I've gone for five this week, and I haven't got any. I haven't gone near the top of the market. So I'm sure that will turn into a big mistake. And Rory McIlroy will win at eleven to two. Well, he's bound to finish in the top five because he does every week. Um, and he'll be Deshambo, Matsuama, he'll be all the usual suspects. But I've gone for five this week. I'm going to go in reverse price order. I think it's going to be a niggly, gnarly tournament. And one thing I have noticed over the years, uh, Molinari last year was sick for greens in regulation and he hit 48 of 72 greens, 66%. Rory McIlroy, the year he won in those firm, fast conditions, he only hits 46 of 72 greens, 63.9% greens in regulation. Mark Leishman was top for greens in reg, 73.6% in 2017. Kevin Kisner and Charlie Hoffman, who were a shot behind, were both 56.9 and 63.9. This is not going to be, I think, ball striking heaven. For me, I think players that are more rounded, great short game, good, good putters on Bermuda grass are going to be the players that thrive. Players that also naturally play well in the wind. And as I I didn't point this out at the top of the show, predictor model, wind variable. Best wind players over the last five years on the PGA Tour. 
go and have a play with the predictor model. Okay, five tips this week, bigger prices. Firstly, JB Holmes, a point each way, 100 to 1. I managed to get that eight places each way, 50 odds with Boyle Sports. So thank you very much to Boyle Sports, who right now, Boyle Sports, over here in the United Kingdom and the Republic of Ireland, they are the best bookmaker so far in 2020. Better than Paddy Power, better than Betfair Sportsbook. For the first time ever, they are leading the way in terms of each way places across both the European Tour and PGA Tour. The only firm this week, again, they've gone eight places each way across both. So ball sports have really jumped to the top of the leaderboard in terms of each way places. JB Holmes, eight places each way, 50 odds with ball sports, 100 to 1. He won't be popular, probably won't get mentioned. But the fact of the matter is, five PGA Tour victories, and the last three have come at 66 to 1, 33 to 1, and last year at Riviera, 150 to 1. That was a firm golf course, featured some wind, plays well in the wind, plays well on tougher golf courses. He is putting likes out at the moment. And actually, you look at strong classical golf courses, Torrey Pines, he's finished second, sixth, and fourth. Riviera, seventh, sixth, third, eighth, and first. Augusta National, fourth. Quail Hollow, a ninth. And of course, he won uh, in 2014 on Bermuda Grass Greens. Muirfield Village, fourth. Aronimink, fifth. And also Conway Farms, fourth. He just plays well on these old style classical golf courses. And he also wins at a price. His form, 30th. Uh, going back, 51st last time out of Riviera when defending. 51st, 14th, 14th, 16th, 16th, 30th. That reminds me very much of Mark Leishman when he won this in 2017 at 100 to 1. Holmes, in my eight week form or skill set trackers, Holmes sits first for putting average, third for strokes gain putting, and tenth for strokes gain total. So that strokes gain total is effectively a strokes gained immediate form number over the last eight tournaments. He sits tenth for strokes gained total. And he's 100 to 1. Just yeah, should be that price. JB Holmes, 100 to 1, 8 place each way, 50 odds with Boyle Sports. Bermuda Grass Monster. Guy that finished second here in 2017. I've already mentioned his name. Just loves tough, windswept golf. Um, I can remember him doing well in an Open a couple of years ago. Finished second, I believe, led a, a big distance of it. I won't bore you with all of his finishes on Bermuda grass, but they are mega. I think he ranked in the predictor in the top eight Bermuda grass finishers over the last five years. Second in 2018 and first in 2019 at the WGC Dell Match Player Austin Country Club, which features Tiff Eagle Bermuda grass. He's also finished second at TPC Sawgrass. It just goes on and on. Good record at East Lake. Oh, just... His vict uh, last stroke play victory on the PGA Tour came in 2017. It came Colonial. That was a windswept tournament that featured really firm, a uh, firm golf course. He shot 10 under to win that, 270 strokes. We just know that the Poana um, angle over on the West Coast does, ne does not at all support this player. Um, the uh, the actual um, top five he has so far this year came, surprise, surprise, on Bermuda grass at the Sony Open. He was fourth. Kevin Kisner. I've gone a point each way, 80 to 1. Seven places each way, 50 odds with our friends at Bet Fred. Kisner, still available at 80 to 1. Moving towards, um, or short, slightly shorter odds, this guy is playing some great uh, golf and... 2019 President's Cup narrative is unbelievable, isn't it? Justin Thomas, Cameron Smith, Mark Leishman, Webb Simpson, Adam Scott, Patrick Reed, and now Sun J.M. all played in the 2019 President's Cup down in Royal Melbourne and have won PJ Tour tournaments at the start of 2020. I think the next one could be Abraham Answer. One and a half points each way, 60 to 1. Again, Boyle Sports, thank you very much. Eight places each way, 50 odds on Abraham Answer. He's, um, he's at a career-high world golf rank in the in top 30. So far this year, he's finished fourth at the WGC HSBC Champions at Shazam, eighth at the Mayagoba Golf Classic in Mexico, second at the American Express, which was played on Bermuda Grass Greens, 
And immediate form isn't banging you over the head. 43rd at Riviera and 12th last time out in his home country again at Chipotepec. He, he, he's just got the all-round game at the moment as well. Eight-week skill set trackers, my skill set trackers. He ranks 16th for greens in regulation, 5th for scrambling, 18th for putting average, 19th for strokes gained off the tee, 8th for strokes gained on approach, 9th for strokes gained tee to green, 6th, and this was the real key for me, 6th for strokes gained putting, 5th for strokes gained total. Plays well on tough old style golf courses, 4th at TPC Potomac, 5th at Glen Abbey, 7th at TPC Boston in 2017. He's got a 16th at Cobhead in 2018, and he doesn't mind mixing it against the very cream of the crop. That fourth in the World Golf Championship at the end of last year. Don't forget, he was also second at the Northern Trust at Liberty National last August, uh, the first FedEx Cup event, second behind Patrick Reed. 12th last year, and this is the inkling I like, 12th last year at TPC Sawgrass, and the link between Sawgrass and here is huge. He was third after 36 holes and fifth going into Sunday. I just think he's at a better level now, almost 12 months on from where he was there. I think he could be right in the mix. Abraham Anser, one and a half points each way, 60 to one with the eight places at Boyles. Next up, player that's got the top four here, player that really impressed on his 2020 debut in Mexico. He was sixth. Ninth for strokes gained off the tee, ninth for strokes gained on approach, sixth for strokes gained around the green, and first for strokes gained tee to green. Thank you very much. He was fourth at both PGA National and here in 2017. And he has played this golf course three times, finishing uh, fourth and also 29th 12 months ago when he was 11th going into Sunday. His form on the European Tour and PGA Tour has been excellent. Or the, it was excellent at the end of last year. 15th at the Dunhill Links, 18th at the Italian Open, 6th at the CGA Cup on the PGA Tour. 14th at the HSBC Champions, 1st in Turkey, 46th DP World Tour Championship, and then, of course, 6th, two weeks ago in Mexico. Tyrrell Hatton plays brilliant golf by the coast, coastal linksy golf, can play well in the wind, Great record both at the PGA Championship, the US Open and the Open Championship. He was 5th in 2016 and 6th in 2020 at the Open. They were at Royal Troon and Royal Port Rush and they were nasty, windy, crazy conditions. Whatever you throw at Tyrrell this week, it won't bother him. I've got 1.5 points each way. The full 8 places with Betfair Sportsbook 50 to 1 alarm yesterday on Tyrrell Hatton. Finally, might be blowing up the wrong tree. But if this elite player, he's, he's, coming, he's, he's pretty close to dropping out the world's top 50. But if this elite player wants to get in the United States Ryder Cup team, he really needs to get moving. He's got some good events coming up. This being one of them, plays well at, um, he does play well at Austin Country Club for the World Golf Championship match play. Of course, Augusta. He'll have the Travellers later on. But, you know, I think you need to be playing good golf, don't you? And I think under the surface, Bubba Watson's playing some excellent stuff. One and a half points each way. I've gone 50 to 1, seven plays each way with Coral on Bubba Watson. His record here, 8th in 2008, 24th in 2011. He was third after 44, 54 holes. 4th in 2012. 14th in 2013 and 17th last year. For me, he's playing a lot better golf than he was 12 months ago. Um, he has a house in Windermere, lives close by. I think he's a member. Not that that means a great deal. Plays well in Florida. We know that his record at Trump Doral, where they used to play the WGC, Cadillac, is exceptional. Three-time runner-up. 2012, 2014, 2016. It's always even years with Bubba. He was also third there as well. He can play Florida golf courses. Don't you worry about that. Two-time winner on Bermuda grass. And he's form in 2020. Sixth at Torrey Pines. Third at TPC Scottsdale. Missed cut at Riviera when everyone was on. Chalky Bubba missed the cut. Couldn't putt for Toffee. 18th last time out in Mexico. Started the tournament. I think he was second or third after round one. High altitude. He says he can't move the ball. And for Bubba, he needs to be hitting you know, 40-yard hooks, draws, whatever. 
Chipotlepec, the altitude there, struggles. But he was crazily good with a putter there. And this is the point. Again, eight-week trackers, my numbers that I keep for the previews. 18th for greens in regulation. You can read all the top 20s of these trackers at, on my preview. 18th in greens in regulation. 8th for scrambling. 6th for strokes gained off the tee. 9th for strokes gained on approach. This is in the field. 18th for strokes gained around the green, so he's scrambling nicely. 6th for strokes gained tee to green. And, and this is crazy for Bubba Watson, 13th in this field over the last eight weeks for strokes gained putting. And if you look for that form number, the strokes gained total, who's playing right well right now, he's fifth strokes gained total over the last eight weeks. He's at 50 to 1, so I'll take that. Bubba Watson at 50 to 1. Tyrrell Hatton at 50 to 1. I've got Abraham Answer at 60 to 1. I think there's 66s out there on Answer. Kevin Kisner at 80s. And I've also got big JB Holmes at 100 to 1 for this week's Arnold Palmer Invitational. It's been a pleasure. Let me know who you are backing, who you are playing in DK this week in the comments section. But most important of all, drive me through the, the new channel through 200 subscribers. So press the subscribe button and please throw us a like. Absolutely incredible important signals that we need to send to YouTube. Thanks for watching. I'll be back next week for the Players Channel.